Gabby's family wants answers. Gabby's family want answers. Cooperate with authority. Tell them what they know. Gabby Venora Petito had gone missing and the whole country demanded to know the truth about where she was and what happened to her. Was she dead? Had she run away? And how did fiancé Brian Christopher Landrea fit into the situation? But just when investigators felt like they were about to get some answers, Landrea vanished without a trace, and thus began one of the biggest investigations of 2021, one that everyone couldn't stop talking about. Everything began years prior to the incident, back when Gabby Petito was a student at Bayport Blue Point High School. She was a student described as engaged with her studies and mindful of social issues. Petito and her younger brother even volunteered to be in a music video that raised awareness about gun violence. But despite her interest and drive to promote change, Petito found that her life after high school was challenging. After graduation, Petito worked in a restaurant in North Carolina in hopes of saving enough money to go to college. She was a hostess and kitchen aide for two years before applying to Cape Fear Community College, which did not accept her application. While trying to figure out her life and what she wanted to do as a career, Petito met an old friend who would change everything. In early 2019, Petito met with a classmate from high school, Brian Londi. Though Petito knew Londi from high school, they were never close, but after growing up and meeting again, the two formed a new connection and started dating. Later that year, Petito moved down to Florida to move with Landrea and his parents in Northport. There, the two got jobs at the local supermarket, jobs that they had quit in less than a year due to the growing COVID pandemic. With no jobs and the country shutting down, there wasn't much for the couple to do except for stay home. That was when the couple decided to use their circumstances as a chance to explore a new lifestyle. The two took their car and decided to go on a cross-country drive from New York to California, seeing as many sights as they could along the way. The trip turned out to be an eye-opening experience for the couple. Petito and Landrea enjoyed the experience and grew closer in the process. Petito had her 21st birthday while on the road trip, and Landrea proposed to Petito as well. The trip was so life-changing that the newly engaged couple decided they wanted to go do it again and planned out another trip to explore sites and travel to new places. In 2020, Petito bought a white van that she later converted into a camper. She and Landrea then got jobs to help them fund their upcoming adventure. Petito got two jobs, one as a nutritionist and another at the local Taco Bell. In total, she worked 50 hours a week to secure funds. Her fiancé, meanwhile, worked at an organic juice bar. That was also the time when Petito began blogging on social media as a hobby. Petito thought that traveling and living out in a van could be a fun experience to follow, and believed that if she put in the work, she could turn her passion for travel into a living by having a strong online presence. She created an Instagram account and an accompanying website, then decided she was going to vlog and document their next road trip. Gabby Petito's Instagram started to see some early success when the couple started their second cross-country road trip. Petito documented her and Landrea having breakfast, seeing national landmarks, and enjoying their time together. She even edited a compilation video of her adventure and posted it on her YouTube channel. Hello, hello, and good morning. <laughs> it is really nice and sunny today. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning, um, but it rained all afternoon yesterday. Oh my God! Suddenly, Gabby stopped posting. There were no new pictures on her Instagram account, and there was never a follow-up to her first vlog video. Some of Potato's followers were curious where she was and when there'd be a follow-up to the engaged couple's adventures. But a hiatus is normal for online creators, so there was no major concern to come from this. But offline, there was a growing cause for suspicion. The family of Gabby Potato started to become concerned. She was still texting with them and talking about their trip. But Gabby refused to take any phone or video calls. They wanted to make sure Gabby was feeling well. And she did sound fine, but this was extremely unusual behavior for her. 
These suspicions quickly escalated into concern when the couple's van arrived at Brand Landre's parents' house. Although he arrived in his fiancée's car, Potato was nowhere to be seen. Landrea refused to talk about what happened to his fiancée. Even when the police arrived to investigate, immediately suspicion was placed on Landrea. Being the last person to know the whereabouts of Potato, police surrounded Leandre's parents' house until further notice. Potato's moderate online following helped to bring attention to the incident. What started as a typical vlog series where a wholesome couple shared their travels online had suddenly taken a twisted edge. Media outlets took this small buzz and reported on the news story about the man who arrived alone from an extended trip with his fiance. The story then spread like fire, capturing the imagination of the public. Because while everyone was certain that Brian Landrea had done something to his partner, there were still questions about what it was that he did and where Potato was. Once the story caught traction, people started talking, speculating, and going through Gabby Potato's social media channels to look for clues. One of the biggest appeals to this story was the mystery behind it. There were so many interactions between her and Brian Landrea in those public photos and videos that the public had a trove of evidence that they could dissect to be a part of the mystery. Was there any way to figure out if Brian was a killer through all the smiles and hand-holding online? That's what people tried to figure out. And thanks to the public interest, several pieces of information managed to come forward. There was a domestic disturbance case where a woman said she saw a man slap a woman. The couple she saw was later identified to be Brian Landrea and Gabby Potato. And this seemed to suggest a history of Potato being abused by Landrea whenever the cameras weren't filming or recording their lives together. There was also a police body cam released where Brian Landrea and Gabby Potato were pulled over for speeding on the road trip. The driver is uh, showing some obscure driving, possibly intoxicated. Currently doing 45 miles an hour. Zone through here is 25. Oh! Subjects just hit the curb. Correction speed limit is 15. I'm about three quarters of a mile into the arches just before the gate. Place your vehicle in the park and go ahead and turn it off for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, park? Oh, it, it isn't parked yet. Sorry. Okay, turn off your engine. Go ahead and set your keys on the dash for me, all right? What's you guys' names? Gabby. I'm Brian. Gabby, Brian, okay. What's going on? How come you're crying? I'm just crying. We've just been fighting this morning. Some personal issues. It was a long day. We were camping yesterday and camping got the out supplies and stuff. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I hit the, the bump there. <laughs> I was distracting him from driving, I'm sorry. Can I get you to step out of the vehicle for me, ma'am? Yeah. Just hang tight right there. Um, do you mind if I take your keys and just put them on your hood? You got it, buddy. I'm so Thank sorry. Thank you. Oh, no, you're fine. I'm going to go ahead and close your door, okay? Why don't you come over here? So 229, I have the female that was on the passenger mm -hmm. seat separated from the male. Keys are on the hood. You want to tell me what's going on? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, some days, I, <laughs> I have really bad OCD. And okay. I just, I was just cleaning and straightening up the back of the van before, and I was apologizing to him and saying, I'm sorry that I'm so mean, because sometimes I have OCD, and sometimes I just get really frustrated. Not, like, mean towards him. I just, like... I guess my vibe is like I really I'm really like in a bad mood. And I was just saying I'm sorry if I'm in a bad mood. I've just been really stressed. I had so much work I was doing on my computer this morning. What do you do for a living? Um, well, I, I hate to work at an organic juice bar, but I just hit my job 
okay. I was a nutritionist. That's oh, what, okay. That was my That's job. Cool. And I just um, quit my job to travel across the country, and I'm trying to start a blog. Okay. Stuff. So, so I've been building my website. So I've been really stressed, and he doesn't really believe that I could do any of it. So that's kind of been like a, I don't know. He's like, in, I don't know. I don't know. We've just been fighting all morning, and and he wouldn't let me in the car before. And then Why I, wouldn't he let you in the car? Because you have your OCD. He told me I needed to calm down. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm perfectly calm. I'm calm all the time, and he really stresses me out, and I just. Morning. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't I sit you down in the back seat of my car? You're not in any trouble, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to be putting handcuffs on you. You obviously don't have any weapons. I'm going to get you into the air conditioning, let you take a breath, relax a little bit, and then I'll come back and talk to you in a few minutes, okay? Okay. All righty. What's that? Yeah, I just spoke to her. Yeah. So, you want to do me a favor? Let's go ahead and get you to step out of the vehicle. All righty. Come on over here. You're not in any trouble right now. So, tell me what's going on. It, the shoes get worked up sometimes, and I try and really distance myself from her. So, like, I, I lock the car and I walk away from her. What, what happened this morning is that. She's trying to start up like her own little website blog and everything, so I give her time. And I, we really had a nice morning with everything, and if anything, but um, she just got worked up because we were trying to get going and get our day going because we want to go um, like barges and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. You, you want to tell me about those scratches on your face? She had stuff on her hand. That's why I was pushing her away because I she, she wanted. To, I locked the keys so I could walk away. I, I said, let's just take a breather and let's not you know go anywhere. Let's just calm down for a minute. She's doing and then she had her phone and was trying to get the keys and she was batting away. I was just trying to, I know I shouldn't push, but I was just trying to push her away to go, let's, let's just take a minute, step back and breathe. And we see if she got me with her phone. Can I see your hand? Oh, you got a mark right here. Oh, that's from a wire. That's from a wire? Yeah. You want to tell me about hitting that curve? Hitting the curve was her grabbing the wheel. Did she grabbed the wheel? Yeah. She said, I can't believe we're getting pulled over and then she grabbed the wheel. What about the speed? Did she take over the... Just no, I thought the pedal on you. I was going fast. I'm sorry. No, it's probably just the, the moment of like, I'm still shaking out. The adrenaline, seeing the lights flashing up, and then the herd gripping the wheel. So if I sped up, I'm sorry about that. Or if I was speeding beforehand, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's just it took quite a bit to catch up to you. So oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. We're just going into the the park again to get water because we have a six gallon water container to uh -huh. fill up. So we're just grabbing water for the hike. Okay, and we're just I was trying to keep everything calm and quiet because there's plans still to go for a hike, but it's good. Do me a favor. You want to go ahead and just take a seat right over here on the curb sure. for me? And if I was speeding, I'm sorry. My apologies. You don't have anything in that pocket or anything like that, do you? Okay. Nope. Just the wallet? All right. And then, do you mind lifting your shirt so I can check the waistband? Yeah. I got Turn around for me real quick. Perfect. Nothing. I just, I just no, want I to make you. sure. That's all, man. Go ahead. Do me a favor. Take a seat. All right. All right. Can I just, I'll say crisscross applesauce. Can I just sit in the shade because I'm all... No, it's okay. It's okay. I'll give you some shit. <laughs> you just slap them first. It's on a steak. How many times? Bravo, Romeo, India, Alpha, November. And then what? And his reaction was to do what? It's gonna be out of Florida. He just grabbed it. Did he? Did he hit you though? I mean, I mean, it's okay if you're saying you hit him. You know, I understand if he hit you, but we want to know the truth. If he actually hit you. Because you know, where did he hit you? Don't no, worry, be honest. He slapped your face or what? this question is going to determine what happens next. But the only person who can answer this question is you. Mm -hmm. Think very hard before you answer the question. Do not quickly answer it. Think very hard. When you slapped him those times, were you
were you attempting to cause him physical pain or physical impairment? Was that what you were attempting to do? No. What were you What were you attempting to do? What was the reason behind the slapping and stuff? What was What was it you were attempting to accomplish by slapping? I was trying to get him to stop telling me to hunt him. Well, it doesn't sound to me like she attempted to injure him. It's your call. This is 100 percent your call. I support you either way. I'll let you get back to your parents, okay? So, this is what I'm gonna do. I've decided I am not going to cite you for domestic violence battery, okay? It was only going to be a class B misdemeanor. However, the domestic violence portion of it enhances it makes life a major pain in the butt, especially at your 22, right? So I'm choosing not to cite you today. So you are not going to be charged with it. All right? But this is what I do have to do. I am separating between you tonight. Okay? I want you guys both to be tonight away from each other. Relax. Breathe. I Because there's no reason to be crying now. Okay? This is... I understand that this can feel like it's a nightmare, but you're coming out as the golden flower on top of it, okay? So, you're gonna be taking the van tonight, and you're gonna go somewhere else. I am going to get him lined up for the hotel room tonight. I want you guys to stay away from each other. For both of you guys the same. From what you told me and what he told me, you guys have a bunch of little things that are building up, building up, building up, and finally the little string that you guys were tight walking on the road tonight. Does that sound about right? So, I just want everybody to breathe, get a chance away from each other, go eat a meal, talk to your parents, whatever it is you gotta do. The police seemed to dismiss Landrea's actions, saying the push was self-protection on Landrea's part, and they focused more on Gabby Potato slapping Landrea. The public brought evidence like this together, helping to paint a better picture of what really was happening between the two fiancés. Leandre seemed to be abusive and manipulative toward Gabby Potato, and Potato's perspective was never taken seriously. You just reinforced his behavior, and I think that he felt relieved, and you, I saw that relief. It was palpable, I saw it on camera, and he's joking, and he's sort of making jokes. And he clearly lied to the police officers and they believed everything that he said. That makes me angry. A community started to form around the Gabby Potato disappearance. While a lot of clues were brought forward, people were still wondering what happened to Gabby and if she was still even alive. This growing community brought more and more people to this case. And soon the entire country wanted to know what Brian Landrea did. As the coverage of the case exploded in popularity, reporters started crowding the property alongside the police. They swarmed the entrance to the residence, hoping for a brief glimpse at the man in question. Police were able to find evidence that Leandre tried to make a withdrawal on Potato's debit card without her consent, which was enough of a reason to get an arrest warrant on the man and question him. This was the moment the entire country had been waiting for, but everyone's shocked. When the police went inside to detain Brian Leandre, he was not on the premises as police had assumed. According to Brian's parents, their son had taken a backpack to go for a hike and never came back. Leandre's parents then pointed police in the direction that their son had gone in, and the manhunt began to find Brian Leandre. This twist in the Gabby Potato case caused the story to explode. Now it wasn't a chase for what had happened. It was to find Brian Leandre. Leandre's parents seemed to be aiding the police at first, showing them the direction their son had gone hiking toward. Weeks of searching the nearby area proved zero results. There were many online who speculated that the parents were covering for their son to let him escape. As the hunt for Brian continued, it yielded zero results. During the investigation, a couple provided video evidence that they believe had a clue on the whereabouts of Potato's body. Police went to investigate the area in question, Bridger Teton National Forest in Wyoming. When they arrived and searched the area, they did find a dead body in the area. After forensic analysis, experts were able to confirm that the body was, in fact, Gabby Potato. I am Dr. Brent Blue, uh, uh, Teton County 
Wyoming coroner. After a detailed investigation by our forensic pathologists, our anthropologists, and local law enforcement, uh, with assistance from the FBI, the Teton County Coroner Office is following the following verdict in the death of Gabrielle Lenora Petito. We hereby find the cause and manner of death to be the cause, death by strangulation, and manner is homicide. First and foremost, on behalf of the FBI personnel and our partners, I would like to extend sincere and heartfelt condolences to Gabby's family. Joe and Tara Petito and Jim and Nicole Schmidt. As every parent can imagine, this is an incredibly difficult time for the family. It was now perfectly clear Brian Leandre had murdered his fiancée and hidden her body out in the woods. There were many sightings of Brian Leandre in the weeks that followed his escape. Most were false claims, but there were still dozens of posts on social media that helped investigators look in the right direction. Specifically, it was a series of videos on the popular platform TikTok that helped lead police to sightings of a young, white man who fit Leandre's description, who was acting strangely. Police followed the leads to Meyakayachi Creek Environmental Park. There they found skeletal remains that they could identify only as Leandre. A series of autopsies concluded that the cause of death was a self-inflicted gunshot wound, almost certainly a case of suicide. Months later, police found a journal left behind by Leandre. Inside was a confession he had left behind before his death. Everything in the journal had confirmed what most people had concluded by that point. Brian said he killed Gabby Potato in a fit of anger and discarded the body. He then took her phone to text her friends and family as a cover-up to avoid suspicion. Though nothing new, the confession was enough for the police to finally release a statement confirming Brian as the sole murderer of the young Gabby Potato. Brian Leandre's parents are currently being sued for distracting police and helping their son escape. But aside from that, most interest in the case had subsided. The mystery had concluded and the public found other interests to focus on. As quickly as the case blew up in popularity, it had died out just as fast. All the chocolate so mounted. <laughs> it's a river of chocolate. <laughs> you can't keep chocolate in Utah. Not in July. <laughs>